Hello, Herman here with another episode in the ClearPass workshop series where we will build a ClearPass deployment from scratch and integrate with Wired Wireless Active Directory and much more. So in the previous videos, we set up ClearPass guests together with Aruba Instant and I promised you to create an episode specifically to go uh, step by step through the login process for a uh, guest, uh, just to give you some more understanding of how this will happen uh, and how it works under the hood. So we've seen this diagram uh, where we will see an initial redirect. Then we see the inter uh, interaction with the ClearPass server for the registration, uh, then for the logging in. And in the end, uh, there will be from the browser uh, through an HTTP post, the credentials will be posted to the instant AP, which will in the backend uh, do a radius request to the ClearPass server. Um, and then in the end, there will be access to the network. So let's see that happen in uh, real life. So uh, this is my client. Uh, so I already connected to the guest network. Uh, we can see here in the instant AP that I'm uh, connected. And uh, first thing we need to do is to get back in the situation where we are uh, connected to the captive portal. And there is a small issue because if I press disconnect now here on uh, the uh, on the on the, the the instant ap to disconnect the client um, as soon as it's reconnecting through the mac authentication the mac caching it's returning on the network so um, i won't get the captive portal again um, one small thing to know is that here if we check uh, the output for the Mac caching that we can see that the username that we initially logged in with is also uh, returned to the instant AP. So in the instant AP, instead of the Mac authentication, which was uh, normal for uh, users that are Mac authenticated, um, instead of the Mac address, we can see the username. So still, if users are using Mac caching, um, they are shown in your wireless solution as the uh, username instead of uh, just the MAC address. So that's a nice thing. But let's go back to the ClearPass server. So what do we need to do uh, to get this client back to the um, uh, get back to the captive portal? Um, what we need to do is uh, disable the process of the MAC caching, and we can do that for this client by uh, taking the MAC address here and then uh, go into the endpoint database because in the endpoint database um, this is the place where we have stored attributes so here we can see the username which was put in there uh, by the login form or the registration form um, and uh, we can see a uh, mac of expiry so i can wait for another day but let's not do that um, let's just uh, remove these attributes uh, from here and uh, now if we uh, press a disconnect here again for this specific client, uh, we should be returned into the captive portal. Um, so let's see if that works. Um, and uh, what we will do now is um, in Chrome, uh, Google Chrome, if you press uh, Control Shift I, you can uh, see here uh, all the network queries going out. So all the URLs requested, you can see it here. Um, this is built into every Chrome browser, so it's very nice. Um, what I do typically is press preserve logs because uh, normally it will just do this uh, one by one uh, page. And if you go to another page, it will stop here. Um, but for the history that we want to see, I put in the preserve log here. So let's um, refresh this page and see if we are indeed reconnected to the captive portal. And uh, yes, we are. So let's go through what we see here. So first entry here is that we uh, see a request going out for uh, intranet.arubalab.lock. Uh, and uh, what's uh, returned with is a 302 uh, code. So what you can see here on the left is that this client has the role of external captive portal. And what it will do is it will uh, hijack every HTTP request, so every request going out on port 80 on the instant AP, and it will redirect, uh, send a redirect to the captive portal. And it's done here with the uh, response location header. So you can see it's redirecting to a CPM1, rubelab.com, guest workshop registration. And here's putting some additional information 
like the MAC address and the IP address. Um, so ClearPass can use that. So it is redirecting clients to uh, the ClearPass server. So this is the reason why we need to have a, a valid SSL certificate on the ClearPass server, HTTPS certificate, because uh, the client is going here to uh, this uh, host name. And uh, yeah, you don't want to have any uh, warnings and you don't want to have it in plain text because it's yeah, all private information uh, or personal identifiable information uh, and passwords. So uh, you want to have this HTTPS, but this is the reason why we need to have a valid HTTPS certificate on the ClearPass and the client mustn't uh, be able to resolve that uh, name. So then when we are redirected, you can see this is the request going to the ClearPass um, and it will show the page that you can see here on the left. There's some style sheets, there's some JavaScript um, that's doing all that nice uh, animations in the background. And what you can see here, uh, these are the uh, these are the the, page, uh, the, the the images that are running in the background. So let's go on. So go here to the register. We've seen this in the previous video. So if you want to see how this is built, uh, take a previous video in the series and we are going to uh, log in. And what you can see is there are uh, a few steps here. So here, um, here we can see uh, another. So this is uh, the request uh, for the receipt. Then we press the login button. And uh, what you can see is that the browser here is going to uh, HTTPS captive portal login dot Aruba lab uh, and then CGI bin login. So this is um, an internal page on the instant AP. And uh, you can see here down that it's uh, just posting the values user with the username and password with the password. And it wants to do an authenticate. So that's nice. And uh, the big next question is how does uh, the client get to the instant AP? So this uh, this URL or this name captive portal login, it's the same uh, that we uh, installed here uh, under maintenance. We installed a HTTPS certificate here for the captive portal. Uh, so it's this name and uh, yeah, we've explained in the previous video why you need why you need to have this name. But again, this needs to be a valid HTTPS certificate. Otherwise, the client will pop up with uh, a warning. And this is also uh, the same name that's configured here in the ClearPass. So uh, the ClearPass is redirecting to this name. Then uh, the instant is taking the name from its uh, from the certificate. And it's doing a so-called uh, DNS hijack for that uh, for that specific request. So what's that DNS hijack? Here is a packet capture running on the client. So uh, what we can see is that this is a DNS request uh, from uh, the client, and it's a DNS request. Uh, when we can open here the query, it's asking for the IP address for captive portal login dot uh, and the instant AP is then responding with the answer. So let's scroll down. It's uh, responding with the answer. Uh, the IP address for this captive portal, um, it's uh, 172.31.98.1. And this is an IP address that's running internally in the instant AP. So if you do a show IP interface brief, you can uh, probably see this IP address and it may be different on each AP, but um, yeah, it's just running in the AP. And when the client is then uh, connecting uh, and sending this login request, um, it's just taking that locally. It's uh, fetching the username and the password from the request in the backend. It's running the radius query. So if we check in the access tracker, we can see uh, this radius request coming in from the instant AP. And then um, yeah, the ClearPass will tell the AP to allow this user on the network. Um, so it will give an access accept. And uh, after that, the instant AP is redirecting this specific user 
back to uh, the starting page. So um, we set up a starting page, which is the uh, internet uh, page in our uh, in our case, but probably it will be your uh, corporate uh, homepage. So, so very nice. So um, these are, uh, yeah, in real life, the steps that are used to do this uh, captive portal uh, login. So first the redirect where the instant AP will hijack the first uh, port 80 or HTTP request coming in, then uh, redirect the client to the captive portal page. Um, and uh, by the way, many operating systems, when you first connect, um, it will do in the background some uh, HTTP probes to see if it's uh, getting that redirect. Uh, and that will allow you to uh, get the captive portal automatically prompted. So uh, what you see a lot and what we saw in the last demo is that uh, when we connect to the guest network, um, there's automatically the default browser opened with the captive portal. Um, so that's the redirect. Then uh, on the captive portal, you do the uh, registration and the login. And then in the end, uh, the browser will send the username password to the instant AP, uh, which is uh, both HTTPS uh, protected by the certificate in the instant AP and there is a DNS hijack. Uh, so the instant AP will respond with its own IP address to the DNS query. Um, and that's the way how the credentials can be posted to the clear to the instant AP, um, which will do in the background a radius request to the clear pass server. So it can uh, get in return uh, some role for the guests. So uh, that's how we can limit what a client can do. So this is the guest uh, process. Um, I thought it was good to show it you step by step, because if you uh, know how it's working in the background, you probably can better understand it and you can better troubleshoot it in cases it doesn't work. So I hope you like this video. Uh, please put your comments below and subscribe to our channel so you will be notified for any new video. Thanks for watching.